Hello there, you beautiful soul. Welcome back to another Culture Talk with Rebecca Munoz, host of Cultured Society. I am here with another special guest. In fact, this is my first male guest of this series that I'm doing this month. And I'm so excited because John Garay is actually a gentleman that I have known since I was a teenager. And uh, I have gone through different phases of my life and been able to still keep in contact with this person that has made such a huge impact in my life as well as in my family's life. So I thought it would be an amazing idea to bring him on because he adds so much value, not only to me, but also to all the people that come into his energetic field. And all of my guests are such a huge part of my life, but also are really changing the narrative of what it means to be human and what it means to really have compassion, empathy, and really passion, a lot of passion for life and serving others. So I'm just honored. I'm so honored to have this special guest here with me today. And, um, and this is just the beginning of so many amazing conversations that we are going to have here in the Cultured Society community this month. So stay tuned. So to introduce John, um, John is a self-awareness coach. He calls himself the coach for humans. He's a life strategist, blogger, and public speaker. He has spent over 22 years mentoring individuals in life skills, career transitions, relationships, and life recovery. John's resume includes pastoral care, behavioral health, and higher education. From an early age, he realized that God created him to bring hope, healing, and encouragement to others. He is currently living out of his purpose by creating a space where people can rediscover and become all that they were created to be. He currently resides in the beautiful state of Arizona with his wife, three dogs, and an antique piano whom he calls Betty. <laughs> I'm so excited to introduce this guest. And as a matter of fact, I want to tell you a little story about John. So when I first moved to Arizona in 2016, I actually got recruited by a company in the fashion industry. And in my first year, uh, in Arizona with this company, I kind of already knew that I was going to transition out of the fashion industry as a whole because I felt like God was really calling me to do something greater. And at the time, John was actually looking for clients to do life coaching with, and I was one of his clients while I was still in the fashion industry. And John put a lot of things into perspective for me, and he really helped me really reevaluate and also to question whether my purpose, I was fulfilling my purpose with the career that I was doing. And I truly believe that we are called to fulfill a purpose with the work that we do. And even when we are exchanging our time for money. And I think that this is one of the reasons why I decided to have these conversations is because everybody that I'm bringing on to these conversations are people that are really operating in purpose. And it is so important. It's so important to have these conversations and to even have accountability and to, I myself consider, I, I consider myself a coach. I work with a lot of people, but as a coach, we also, as, as therapists, um, you know, doctors, psychiatrists, like any type of person who is working with other people, it is really important for ourselves to work with another person that can give us a different perspective. Um, because oftentimes when we're working with other people, we tend to take on the responsibility of other people and then we're not really taking care of ourselves. So really, John, I owe you I owe you, um, you know, so much for helping me really reevaluate and to, you know, transition into my purpose and my calling. So thank you so much. Um, so I want to start off with the very first question that I ask all of my guests, and that is, um, John, what is your life's philosophy? All right, Becky, first of all, I just want to say I absolutely love you. You are an amazing living soul. I've been part of my life for a, a long time and just so excited to be part 
of this project that you have going on? And I'm gonna jump in and answer that question. But I wanna say something first, because as you were talking right now, my mind just went back to that moment where you uh, helped volunteer for my practicum whenever I was a life coach. I was uh, going through my life coach training. And I remember you, that you were sitting at the table at my kitchen table, we're going through our coaching session. And the look in your eyes, whenever we're done with that coaching session, you, it was very apparent that you were getting up and you had, you were going to take action. And I was brand new to this. I had no idea what you had up your sleeve, what your thought, what thoughts were going through your mind. You just look really determined to make a transition in your life. And uh, it's just so amazing to see your personal growth, what you've accomplished, and which leads me to my life philosophy and what uh, I really want to empower myself and in empowering myself, also empowering others. And really what, what my life philosophy is, is that I am choosing to be all that God created me to be. Yes. And with that, there's, we, we live in a world where we're handed over scripts from the moment that we're born, telling us how we ought to speak, how we ought to act, how we ought to show up in this world, what jobs we should pursue, who we should date, who we should marry, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And many times there's all these voices that are going around us and we become confused. Mm -hmm. We find ourselves just trapped in, in a state of being that was never really meant for us to live. So my philosophy in life is to really become aware of self, myself, be aware of my gifts, my talents, the dreams that God has placed in my life for this current season of life. And I say current season of life because sometimes they change. Mm -hmm. And really, um, I want to show up as me. Yes. And that's really my life's philosophy and the philosophy that I use to empower others to be everything that they were created to be. Amen. Amen, brother. And that is exactly what we're here to do. And I'm so glad that you said that because we are, we are inundated with so much information. And in the society where we live in a very cookie cutter and microwave society and everybody is falling into the comparison trap and it is really hard for us to kind of break out of that mold to really do what our specific calling was to, to do, right? Um, and I, I'm sure that it wasn't always like this for you. So going into the next question, how has that philosophy evolved over the years? Absolutely. So Becky, we have similar backgrounds. Uh, we both grew up in a, in a religious environment, which, you know, I'm very grateful that I had that support growing up. But uh, one of the things that I was taught from, from, a mo from the time that, it, uh, gosh, I can't even remember, probably my mom started teaching me verses as a child, but I was taught that the greatest commandment was to, uh, to uh, love God with all my heart, mind, and soul, and to love my neighbor as myself. And I really took loving my neighbor as myself as uh, being my ultimate goal in life, mm -hmm. you know? And so I did whatever I could to, to love my neighbor as the way uh, that I would ought to be loved, that I would like to be loved. And I, I did some pretty extreme things. At, at the age of 21, I became a foster parent. Uh, most people are out partying at, at that age, you know, enjoying their youth. Uh, I, I took that calling in life seriously. I wanted to give. And so I found myself in many circumstances in life where uh, I was just, I, I was dedicating my whole entire life to serving others. But the thing that I forgot was that I forgot that, well, I actually didn't even have an awareness of, was that in order to love my neighbor as myself, I actually had to love myself. And it wasn't until... Um, I fell flat on my face. I, I came to a point in my life where I realized I was absolutely miserable, where I found myself disappointing everybody around me. And I had to learn to love myself. And then I finally got it. Mm. You know, and, and so my philosophy went from serving, 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 serving to being, 
appreciating. And through that appreciation, through that self-care, that self-awareness, I finally had an abundance to love others the way I wanted to be loved. Mm, that's so good. That's so good. And that's so true because I think that we're taught that, you know, in service that we have to give selflessly and that, you know, in order for us to fulfill a purpose, we have to be constantly giving of ourselves. But we all often forget that we cannot offer that from an empty vessel. And we have to be able to serve ourselves first. And it's not like self-serving where, you know, you don't really care about others, but it's that that self-care that you give yourself on a day-to-day -day basis where you have an abundance of that love to be able to give to others. Because at the end of the day, you'll be depleted if you don't do that for yourself. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's so good. That's so good. And how would you say that your upbringing... Um, your upbringing and circle of influence has impacted the way that you think and live today? Because I'm sure that that even has evolved over the years. Absolutely. So I, I'm a firm believer that at any given moment in time that God is going to place the right people in your life that you need to have around you to get through whatever season of life you're going through. And sometimes those people are there simply to build your character. Sometimes people are there to learn from. There's some people that you're going to want to glean things from. Uh, and there's seasons in life where I believe that God calls you to walk that journey alone because there's some strength to be built during that season of life. About two years ago, I, uh, I attended, a, it, it, was a, it was a camp. It was, it's called a, a, rebel, a rebel practitioner uh, camp by a, uh, by a coach, Bastin Kip. And uh, he walked us through this visualization where we were able to envision the future self. And so I, I went through this uh, visualization and from coming from the background that we come from, that's not something that is a normal practice for ourselves. Oh. But um, we, we got to the visualization. I, I, as we're going through it, I was able to visualize a future self where I was empowered to help others, where I had these amazing breakthroughs in life. And then uh, Mastin walked us uh, through this, this picture of looking around us, uh, looking around ourselves, and where we were surrounded by uh, crowds of people who had influenced our life and who were there to help us in life, wherever we're at, perhaps it was a simple word that they had said, or uh, it was their presence that at one point had impacted us. And I remember in that visualization that I was able to look around, I was able to see my elementary school teachers, I was able to see old Sunday school teachers, pastors, family members. And I get teary eyed just thinking about this because there's all these amazing people that I believe that God has placed in my life, even if they were only there for a short moment of time, but their presence impacted my life in such a way that I'm able to be the person that I am today. And it is my desire that I will show up in this world in a way that impacts others to stand up and to be the people that they were created to be when the time is right. Mm -hmm. That's so good, John. And it, it's it's interesting how our life really takes us through all these different pockets, right? And like these different yeah. paths and journeys, because like you said, you and I grew up in a in a denomination where the culture was very different. And oftentimes, I don't know about you, but I really felt like I was kind of boxed in and one of the reasons why I, I decided to start a community like this, because I truly believe that it doesn't really matter like what nationality you come from or, you know, what religious background or, you know, the different philosophies that you have. I, I believe that every single person on this planet has some type of value to offer, regardless of what they believe or what they do for a living and all that. And you just said that, I mean, you went to a community where it wasn't faith-based. It was more so about personal development and seeing yourself in another realm. And that really impacted you in a way that 
it, it, you weren't impacted before or in a very different manner. And it's so important to put ourselves in, um, in different circles, especially Absolutely. based on what we're trying to achieve. Um, and you kind of already answered this question, but do you believe that the line of work that you do infects, and I love to use that word because you know, last year we were infected with a lot of negativity <laughs> and just, um, you know, I, I just believe that positivity is so important. And like a lot of, a lot of the work that we do oftentimes doesn't, in fact, it brings more negativity in our life. And I know that I was in a position where I was, I felt like the environments that I were, was in weren't the most positive. So do you believe that your line of work infects our society with positivity? And if so, how so? So the answer is yes and no. Yes and no. And <laughs> yes, because, you know, my goal as, as a self-awareness coach is to help empower people, to help people, you know, um, actualize and to and to maximize their potential by, by guiding them through a lifestyle and introducing them to a lifestyle of self-awareness and, uh, and self-acceptance. And I know that whenever the end result is something that is great. I've seen some people make some amazing transformation and uh, been, I, I just, it's, it excites me. It's one of the, uh, the best things I experience as a coach whenever I see people that, uh, have been in a certain circumstance and they've envisioned this life that is outside of their reach and I'm able to empower them to bridge a gap between those two areas. But the process to get there doesn't seem positive at all. Mm, yeah, it can yeah. be painful. As you, as you bring awareness, yes, there's some beautiful things that you're going you're gonna to notice about yourself that perhaps you, you never had paid attention to before. But in the same, at the same time, there's going to be these areas of your life that perhaps you've pushed off because they've been less than desirable to, to work on. And suddenly you're faced with the reality that you have to work on them. Sometimes that's pain. Sometimes that's trauma. Sometimes it's beliefs. And to shed yourself of that old skin it is something that, that might not be so fun but the end result is something that is totally worth it. Absolutely. And I, I can attest to that because I've gone through a major transformation in my life, mind, body, and spirit. And I can tell you that although the transformation has been very positive, there has been so many pain points throughout this journey that has brought up so much that I didn't even know was still there. And transformation is a process that oftentimes people avoid because it is so it can be so painful. Um, but it's so great that you are a person that can really stand by somebody and even hold their hand through this process. Because like I said earlier, we all need that accountability. We all need that person who believes in us so strongly, even when we don't believe in ourselves. And that's such a beautiful thing. And I really, I, I definitely admire you for the work that you do, because I know that working with so many different types of people and backgrounds and belief systems cannot, it, it doesn't, it's not always the easiest. It's not always the easiest, but you're right. It can be. Um, it's like, you know, people don't see it, don't see the positivity in the beginning, but then once they get to the end result, and even then, like the end result never really happens. Cause I think that once you, you know, hit a certain level, there's always something else that you're going to have to move towards. Um, this girl, uh, the girl, it was a very inner first interview that I did. This uh, this line that she talked about how uh, new new levels create new devils. So there's always going to be something. <laughs> there's always going to be something that comes up. So it's always good to have that person that empowers you throughout that process. And how do you believe that you stay relevant, unique, and true to who you are as a person in what you do for a living as well as in your personal life? Oh. 
So one thing that, that I think that that is a quality that I carry that really helps me stay relevant is that I have the heart of a life of a lifetime learner. Uh, I'm someone that is always open to learn. So whether uh, that's reading a book or listening to a book, and you'll always find me doing one of those uh, two. I'm uh, I go to two to through two or three. <laughs> that was hard to say through two or three different books per per month, just because I'm wanting to learn, because I'm wanting to implement. I attend uh, different webinars. Uh, I'll tell you something that I did that's kind of crazy, uh, but I, I have two master's degrees. I have an MBA and a master's of science and psychology, but then all of a sudden this thing called quarantine was thrown on us and what am I going to do with this time, right? So I'm actually back in school. I'm halfway through a master's of science and counseling right now. And uh, I, I know there's people that would find other things to do. Uh, there's people that love to do uh, DIY projects around the house. I can't even nail a nail straight, but mm -hmm. I can learn, you know, I can research and I can empower people. And I've had to learn how to tap into those strengths of mine that, uh, that, that, that it's a gift. And so I continuously observe and I connect with other like-minded people. I'm very intentional about who I keep in my circle uh, because I, I want to continue to grow. And I want to continue to shine. I believe the best way I can be a representation uh, of God's glory and grace in my life is if I continue to nurture the gifts that he's given me. Sorry, got a hiccup right there. <laughs> if, as I continue to, you know, uh, develop the gifts that he's given me. There, there's, uh, I think, one of the, the worst ways, well, how do I word this? What, a way to show that you are not grateful is to never use a gift that has been given to you. Mm. And uh, there's a lot of people with God-given gifts on this uh, planet that have placed them on a shelf because they're believing scripts that other people told them and other people that are just simply unwilling to do the work that's necessary to cause them to grow. So um, if you have a gift and you're aware of it, use it. Use it. Yes, you are so right. And you know what? Like. Another reason why we're having these conversations is because we have 200 billion cells in our brain and majority of people are using, utilizing maybe 5% of their brain. Yeah. And so there's so much room. There's so much room for growth. There's so much room to learn something. I mean, just like you, I think that there's just so much information out there and we don't necessarily have to be that on that one dimensional track where we're just learning that one thing that we thought we were supposed to know. There's a variety. There's a variety of, um, of information that's really relevant as because it's a lifestyle right we are we're multi-dimensional human beings we're supposed to have a lot of gifts and it really is just taking the time to really find that and take action on it and that's a daily thing so Absolutely. that's beautiful that's beautiful john that you you definitely keep yourself very relevant because there's always new information there's always someone to learn from and um and there's always going to be someone to teach that Absolutely. Now, talking about purpose, and I, I'm you. You have kind of hit, you know, the nail, you know, on on this already. But I really want you to talk more about how your work that you do um, is aligned with your calling and your higher purpose, and and maybe talk about the the steps that it took you to get there. Yeah. So. Um... Whenever people, sometimes people hear about my education, having an MBA in Master of Science and Psychology, uh, they, they automatically assume that along with that came automatic uh, implementation of what I, of what I have learned. Um, I had a lot of information that was not getting used. And I had this, uh, this way of being in the past that, uh, and I, I touched a little bit on that, like how I always wanted to be loving my neighbor as myself. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't have, have stepped into doing the work that I now do unless I had gone through a serious 
season of darkness where I had to encounter the ugly things that I hated about myself where um, I, I almost lost my marriage, where uh, I, you know, I let down some very important people in my life and where I had to call up some of my friends and tell them, look, this is the real me. This is where I've been these past few years. It took me facing what I didn't want to face in my life anymore for me to be able to actually uh, have the accountability to do the work that I needed. And it was through that journey of self-empowerment that I finally was able to help others. Um, because of that, because I was willing to do the work, I now am able to help others. But if I hadn't to face those, those dark areas of my life, I probably would be on that, like you I call it a sin cycle because that's the, the language of theology that I have. But that word sin, a lot of people see it and they, they get really turned off by it. But the original uh, meaning of the word sin is to miss the mark. It means to have like a goal of a target and you're shooting at a bow and arrow and no matter how hard you keep on trying, you keep on missing it. Mm -hmm. And that is a perfect representation of what my life was like. I knew what I wanted. Um, and I, when I say I knew what I wanted is I know what I wanted to take place in here, but it wasn't until I actually did some inner work and began to face the difficult uh, areas of my life that I was finally able to hit the mark. That was my heart. I was able to work on myself and now I'm able to hold this space for others to work on themselves. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's, that's amazing. And it's so important that when we are doing this work that we recognize that oftentimes we have to know what it's like to go through the valley of the shadow of death, right? Absolutely. To really face ourselves, to look at ourselves in the mirror. And even when we're going through these certain circumstances and experiences, to recognize that they are so important for us to go through because it's one thing to learn from a book and to have all these degrees, but it's another thing to actually have the experience and to have the experience of overcoming in order Absolutely. for us, in order for us to be able to teach people and also empathize because, you know, I, I, I think that it's really difficult to teach people how to do something when we haven't been through it ourselves or even feel to know what it feels like to have that much pain or to even not really like ourselves very much or to be at a point where we are weren't walking in purpose right absolutely one of the biggest things that i struggled with uh, as i started to rise up out of this out of the ashes of my life was uh, i wanted to look around me for good examples of love mm. and i didn't have many and uh, it was very disheartening for me to see that I was part of a larger community that preached a uh, gospel of love, but were horrible lovers themselves. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it was even more difficult to find people that truly loved themselves. So I was looking around, it, it's kind of, um, like an artist who wants to paint a picture uh, of, of a majestic scenery, but has never seen the scenery in his head. They know that it exists, but they have no reference point to begin. Uh, and it takes some really deep inner searching and spending time with himself or herself to be able to finally get that paintbrush rolling and to make a masterpiece. And that's kind of what I had to do with my life. I had to redefine what love meant, how it was going to be expressed. Uh, it was a challenge. It was a challenge, but I am so grateful for that journey. And I'm so grateful that uh, I can now have encounters with others, present a blank canvas before them and give them the space to dream, to hope, and to begin to paint and make a masterpiece. Mm, that's so beautiful, John. That's really beautiful. And I'm sure that, um, well, 
I'm sure it's very different to have the opportunity to do that when you're in a union. I myself went through that journey of self-discovery, but I did it without a partner. I, I wasn't married and I'm currently not married. So how did you begin that journey of self-discovery with another person? Because you had mentioned earlier that you even almost went through a separation. Yeah. So what is very interesting, the dynamic of my wife and I, is that I am very invested in personal development and she is not. She's just your average happy-go-lucky person that kind of just takes life as it, as it comes. Uh, now, I believe we balance each other out. Uh, but what really helped me in the midst of this is whenever I saw the love that she had for me. Mm. Like I saw my wife like take a look at me and just like totally, John, I know you're absolutely jacked up. I don't like who you've become, but I love you and we're going to get through this. And so um, with that, it was being aware of the love languages that were being spoken. And my wife and I have a very interesting dynamic. We don't always speak the same love language, but being Hispanic has taught me to be bilingual. And there's certain way, there's certain times that I'm around different groups of people that I understand what's being communicated because I know both languages. And I had to become very aware of the love languages that were being spoken. Uh, I'm very grateful that, that my wife, uh, her love language is, is acts of service. Now with that, I might be totally be throwing in my man card here, but my wife always wants to fix everything. She was raised by contractors, people who build houses. She could break down like this whole entire house and rebuild it if she wanted to. I can't, but she's a fixer. So there'd be times that I had to learn how to communicate and teach her my language. So part of that would be like, wife, I know that you really want, and I call her wife. That's kind of just like the, <laughs> I call her wife or wifey. I'm like, wife, I, I right now, I don't need to be fixed. I need to be held. Mm. I need to cry. And I need for you to be okay with that. Is that okay with you? And uh, you better believe it was something new for her. It, it wasn't something that she had expected, but being vulnerable, being open, helped bridge the gap towards uh, the place that we're growing to, because we're still growing as a couple, but we're growing in that together. How long have you been married? We're going on 17 years. Wow. Yeah. That's a very long time. And, you know, it's, it's interesting because even um, through, for instance, my own personal journey within the last 17 years, I mean, I am not the same person that I was 17 years ago. So how do you, how do you maneuver through those different phases, you know, with another person, communication, like being open and being adaptable, right? Yeah. So it's been challenging at, at the very start of our of our re relationship, um, I was actually her pastor. <laughs> so uh, there was a different dynamic that we had. And I was very much living underneath a script of expectation that others had of me. And it was also, uh, I take ownership of that script as well because I had some unrealistic expectations of myself during that season of time. But it was one where we didn't communicate emotion where we grinned and bear it. And uh, no matter what came against us, uh, it was like, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And you put on like this, this facade that everything's honky dory. Uh, one of my old pastors used to say that there's nothing more transformational than a church parking lot. Because like a family can go from like yelling at each other to all of a sudden like walking in and skipping together and holding hats. And that was the reality of my life for a very long time now it's taken some time to be able for us to learn how to communicate and to be real and to be vulnerable and to speak uh and and i'm not the person uh who i was i mean physically i am but there's been a lot of growth 
Absolutely. And there's been a lot of growth on, on her end as well. Uh, I, I'm very proud of, of the person who she's become. Uh, if um, you were to spend time with my wife, you would know that my wife uh, was a teen mom, a high school dropout. And uh, she, she was a school bus driver. Like she, uh, not that there's anything wrong with that profession, but she never saw herself outside of that. Uh, and now she's a city employee that is directing a whole department by herself. Uh, I have two master's degrees. She makes a bigger salary than I've ever made. And, uh, and she's a powerful, fierce Latina. Like, I'm just like, you go girl, you know? And, uh, but it took, it took us complaining, uh, not complaining, communicating. There was some complaining too. <laughs> uh, communicating with one another and iron sharpens iron. And I'm able to look at us both, and both of us are some pretty amazing masterpieces. Not because I, I, I'm speaking to puff myself up, but I believe that's uh, that's a testimony of the grace of God and the opportunity that He presents to uh, each and every one of us every day, if we will choose to grow where He goes. Mm, yes, yes, that's so true. Now, how would you say that? Or what practices would you say that you implement in your daily life to continue to stay ground, grounded and divinely connected with yourself? And then when you do that with yourself, how do you do that to stay grounded and connected with your relationship? Yeah, so my day, I, I, I believe it's, it's my morning ritual, but what I have planned each and every morning, I start off each, each morning with a walk. I go out for a walk, I get some exercise, uh, that way, nothing strenuous, but I just, I go out and usually I'm listening to something. Um, I listen to, a, uh, to different types of music. I usually listen to something inspirational or, or like a book. I've, I've really gotten into recently this year, uh, there's, a, there's a, an audio Bible called Streetlights that has like a, the Bible to hip hop beats. So nice. it's like easier, easier to walk with, you know, it's not like a nasally toned person, like, you know, putting you to, to sleep. But I start with that brisk walk every morning. I hit my gratitude journal. And whenever I'm able to like sit and, and start my day with appreciation of what I have, it helps me to begin my day with, uh, with a mindset of abundance instead of a place of lack. Uh, it's I'm able to look at my blessings instead of my stressings because there's a lot of times that you are tempted to wake up in the morning and just focus on everything that's going wrong in our life. And I take the moment to be intentional about what is going great in my life. Uh, then I, I, ha I usually have some type of devotional practice. I, I do a lot of contempt. I practice a lot of contemplative spirituality, which is different from what we were brought up with. Uh, we're brought uh, up in a Pentecostal atmosphere where there's a lot of hand clapping, toe tapping, and you know, running aisles and choirs, large music. It's, it's, it's not just the way that we were brought up, but I've taken in a lot of contemplative uh, practices such as centering prayer, lectio divina, um, where I, I read the Bible or a sacred text and I read it four different times and not a big part, but just a, a small portion. And I just tune into any words that I feel that God is speaking to my heart. And when I practice like the Divina, I practice it with a mindset, knowing that everywhere that I'm at, the presence of God exists there in that moment. So I read that portion of scripture, knowing that God is with me, knowing that he's speaking with me. I enjoy his presence. And I'm able to absorb that, that special message that he has for me, and then implement it in the world. So that could be with my wife. That could be uh, with, uh, I also work in higher education. So it could be with a student that uh, is stressed out. And I have to speak to on that day. It could be with one of my coaching clients that is going through a life transition. But if I don't start my day, with the right mindset, I'm a mess. I agree. I completely agree with you. And I think that the morning routine is the one that is so important to master. Because I always say that, um, you know, every single day is a new opportunity to create something new. 
when you go to sleep, it's almost as though you're dying to yourself, right? Your body's regenerating itself. And when you wake up it, with, with a new breath, it's a new opportunity to create something. But it's so important for you to get yourself in that, in that mindset and just like in that state, yeah, in the state of mind where it's abundance, just the fact that you're breathing in itself is a miracle. And when Absolutely. you can start your day off like that, it just creates an opportunity for so many miracles to happen throughout the day. That's such a beautiful practice to have. Absolutely. Absolutely. Now, what words of wisdom would you give to those that are seeking a deeper understanding of themselves? Because I know that especially in 2020, um, a lot of people who not were not used to ch abrupt change, right? It was something that happened so quickly and it almost forced people to sit with themselves, you know? And I think that that's like so, a, a painful process when you're not planning to go into personal development. It just yeah. happens for you. Yeah. Um, but I think that there's a lot of people now that are definitely seeking something and, and just like a higher higher perspective and, and way of living. So for somebody who's just starting out. Yeah, be kind, be kind to yourself, be patient, but be persistent. And in your persistence, be loving. You know, it's that, that inner journey to self, it, like, like I mentioned at the start of our conversation, it can be painful. It can be uh, scary, um, but it's totally worth it. And so be kind, be gentle, be loving, be patient, be persistent, be you. Yes there's only one of you right absolutely and we need that we need more of individuals that accept and embrace themselves and just allow their giftings to shine through it's so important we need that we we are in dire need of more people that love themselves that much more well would you say that your biggest aha moment or yeah aha moment was of 2020 aha moment you know, my biggest aha moment was, was a series actually of, of, of things that happened. I actually was marketing myself as a mindset coach for men. And uh, I, I did that for about three, four years. And um, in 2020, all of a sudden, I didn't have any men reaching out to me. But uh, what I had reaching out to me were a ton of females. Mm -hmm. and a great number of these were women of color and in a year like 2020 uh where there was so much um turmoil racial tension and turmoil uh and then all of a sudden i had this influx of women of color reaching out to me uh there was this sense of fear like john you better not screw this up there's not <laughs> a lot of places first of all for females to feel safe mm -hmm but then also for women of color to feel safe. And my aha moment came whenever I saw that my, my clients grow and I saw them develop and I saw them stepping into places with bravery and celebrating their victories. When I realized that, yeah, I can, I can do all things in Christ who strengthens me. Like I'm okay, God has gifted me with these giftings with the ability to listen, with the ability to guide, and I shouldn't be afraid. And if he's given me the task, then I shouldn't be scared that I'll screw it up. So it was a big aha moment of, I can do this. And that's when I switched my name from mindset co men's mindset coach to coach for humans. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm just open to coach anyone who comes my way. Well, that's, that's amazing. And this is why we're in this space because we, as a, as a multicultural society that we live in, we are a huge melting pot of different races. I mean, just so many different types of people and even, even people within a race, right? Because I'm Mexican myself and I don't really fit into that mold. 
right, of, of the average Mexican woman. I did everything against what my culture told me, <laughs> told me that I was supposed to do. And I remember mentioning this to you the last call that we that we did with you and Yvonne, um, that I really admire you as, as a male coach because there aren't a lot of men in our society that embrace the uh, the feminine energy aspect of themselves. And I, I really hope that this last year really activated a lot more men to embrace that feminine and as well as their masculine energy, because at the end of the day, we're just souls, right? We're souls in a human body, whether it's a female body or a male body, but we all have the desire to connect. We all have the desire to be heard. We all have the desire to be understood as well as to work with somebody who can empathize and can understand our pain points. And I'm just so grateful for you, John, because you definitely, I mean, you helped me so much. And even, even before that, that life uh, coaching session that we had, I mean, I remember when I first moved to Arizona, I was going to your house for Bible studies. And even being a part of like youth group and being, <laughs> being a part of your choir when I was a teenager, oh my God, I, I've definitely had the opportunity to see a lot of your evolution. And it's been so, such a blessing to see how much you've grown, how much you've opened up, how much you have allowed that fearlessness to shine through you. Because we do, we live in a society where there is so much fear. And like, if we allow, you know, self-doubt to infiltrate our minds, we wouldn't do anything. You know what I mean? We wouldn't do anything with our giftings. And it's so important to have these conversations and to have more humans like you serving and helping others rise. Well, I appreciate you, Becky, and, and the work that you're doing, you're holding this space, holding even uh, this conversation, sharing your platform with others. Uh, as we jumped into this conversation, as, as whenever you first gave me the invite, I, I began to reflect back on, on whenever we first met. Um, I believe we met in 94, uh, 95, 1994, 95, that, that dates us back, uh, mm -hmm. way back. But I remember when I first started to spend time with you, it's because I was close friends with your sister, Myrna, mm -hmm. and we would all hang out together. You were her little sister that she absolutely adored and we'd hang out together and we would go to the library to check out movies because we were starving college students and uh and we were on a budget and i just i was just thinking about like how uh we have moved from a place where uh we had to go to the library to check out movies to now a place where i view you i i live vicariously through your travels as you've traveled around the world but isn't that like such a huge step from, from being, a, you know, just the, some people that are young and trying to have fun on a Friday night and checking out uh, movies at a library to now I see you traveling the world and making an impact on others. Uh, and and I, I'm grateful. I'm grateful that I've been able to see you grow and become the beautiful woman that you are. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that. And I mean, especially coming from a, from a gentleman like you that has had the opportunity to experience so much and and move around and even experiment with um with yourself and not in a negative way but really allowing yourself to live to really experience the things that God has placed in your heart aside from what society is telling you not to do or to do um, and we need we need more people that are um, that are fearless in their approach to really um, gain those higher perspectives to be very relevant and unique in their giftings, and to also align with those because I think that naturally as we as we go through these different levels, um, even though we're always going to have people to help, there's always going to be people that align with us that are going to help us individually grow as well. Um, that are going to inspire us to do even more, right, than we were capable, than we thought we were capable of doing. And I'm just honored 
that um, that I am aligned with, you know, you and your wife, because I see all the work that you're doing um, to uplift humanity. And it's such a beautiful thing to witness. So I'm so grateful. I can't tell you enough how grateful I am to have you in my life. Um, so any any finishing statements that you would like to add before we end this call? I think I've shared everything that's in my heart. Really awesome. appreciate you for letting me speak as much as I did. No, Absolutely. I, Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> no, you definitely added so much value. I'm so grateful that we were able to connect to have this conversation, this important conversation that more people need to be having to be able to embrace, you know, different, um, different philosophies, different belief systems, men and women that come from different backgrounds. You know, I think that it's that is especially after what happened last year, because History repeats itself, right? And it's not something new. I just believe that media is now very prominent in our lives and we get to see a lot more negativity that goes on in this world. But we don't have to be defined by what's going out in the world, right? There's a scripture that says, do not conform by do not conform to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. And then you will be able to test what's perfect and pleasing in God's eyes. And I truly believe that whenever we have these conversations and whenever we um, when we are open right to hearing what other people have to say hearing people's stories it really activates something within us that sometimes we didn't even know was there and it's just I, I really pray and I and my my hope is that you know these conversations continue to inspire you to level up mind, body, and spirit, because we are holistic beings at the end of the day. We can't just operate off of one. They're all connected. And, you know, we just need more people that are operating in that mind, body, spirit alignment. So thank you so much for every person that is going to tune into this conversation and the conversations that we are going to be having on this platform moving forward. You are loved, you are appreciated, you are accepted, and we are looking forward to connecting with you again soon. Thank you and peace.